All right, so in my last video, I kind of showed you guys my setup around using the LD002R printer. I'm just gonna be calling it the LD2R because uh, I do not like that name. What I do like though are the prints I've been getting out of this thing. Look at the quality on these. So you've probably already noticed that my LD2R does not look like the stock units. So let's go through all the changes, upgrades, accessories, and stuff I've made for this printer. But before we start, I also decided to replace the stock switch with an all black one. And then marked his birthday. So I'll be starting with the add-ons that I think are most essential and then working my way to the more optional ones. They're all technically optional, but there are some that I definitely like a lot more than others. Some of this you can print yourself on the LD2R, some you might need an FDM printer, and others you will have to buy. Let's make this quick. The first thing I added was this flexible steel build plate. Start by cleaning your build plate. Then peel off the paper on one side of the adhesive backing. Align it to your build plate and slowly work your way across. And then it's ready for printing. Prints can now be removed super easily just by flexing the bed and then prints will just pop off. I can't believe this actually happened. Oh my god. Creality started selling these as well, and they pretty much work the same. I did struggle a bit with bed adhesion on both of these though, because I think their surfaces are too smooth. So I ended up wet sanding them on some 400 grit wet sandpaper. And this basically took care of that problem. So the thing most people don't like about resin 3D printing are the fumes and smells, volatile organic compounds or VOCs that's released by liquid resin. And most resin 3D printers don't even address this problem. So I appreciate Creality for adding in a small fan and carbon filter. These basically filter the air in the enclosure downwards into the base of the printer. And then another fan in the back blows this outwards. Now the thing is you're supposed to replace carbon filters every couple of months and with how much fumes is constantly going through this tiny little filter, I kind of wanted to replace it more often. So I designed this little spacer. This print turned out super worked because I didn't really orient it right. Still works though and it goes on over the fan with the original bolts. And honestly a lot of these prints are going to be a lot easier on an FDM printer, especially this next piece which has some bridging. This basically slides over the whole thing. And then there are two drawer designs. One works with an activated carbon sheet. And the other drawer design works with activated carbon pellets instead. I also ended up replacing the stock fans with a much thicker Noctua fan for a stronger and quieter suction. You can just connect the black and red cables together, but I recently got a crimping and housing set. And this is what all the cool kids use now. So with these in place, if I ever need to replace the fans, it'll be really easy. I had to design a thinner spacer so I can continue to use the original bolts. And then I decided to reprint the drawers in black because that looks a little better, I think. Now these kind of carbon filters can help with the odors coming out of the resin, but I've also read that the kind of VOCs released from liquid resin can be as small as just a couple of nanometers. Carbon filters aren't gonna help a whole lot with that. Not even HEPA filters will. Granted, there's no clear evidence exactly how dangerous this stuff is and how much exposure is too much, but I wanna be safe and responsible about this here because I wanna be a good example for my viewers. <laughs> Because we all know I have not been doing a good job of that. I see your comments. 
All right, so for longer prints, I decided to get this inline fan duct. There's only one possible mounting point on the back of the printer, so I had to model up this duct design. It uses these slots that perfectly fit some 3x5mm magnets. I could just stick this out of the window now, but my apartment actually has an AC port. But I needed to print this adapter for it to fit. Now I can feel a small suction on all sides of the printer and that should pull out any VOCs released from the resin. These are great for preventing dust from getting into your resin in between prints. If you have an FDM printer, there's actually a larger design you can print as well. This full sheet lid is a lot sturdier and it can be locked down under these knobs. If you plan on leaving resin in here for a long time, you might want to print these in black to prevent exposure to light as well. When I'm cleaning the resin vat, I never want to put it down because getting dust between the curing screen and the FEP sheet is not only hard to clean, but it can really wreck the quality of your next print. So I found this holder. The vat can now be placed on this and cleaned with the FEP sheet completely suspended. My acrylic cover has been getting really dirty from resin fingerprints and splashes. And I don't think you can clean this because they seem to fuse together after some time. Now I can take off the cover with one hand and I never have to touch the acrylic ever again. I have a small work desk, which means whenever I take off the cover, I don't really know where to put it. So I designed this thing. It clips to the top of the printer and holds the cover up. And now it's not taking up any room on my desk. And then when I'm done with it, I can just flip it upside down and now it's out of the way. This is a great tool for stirring the resin in between prints. And it also picks up any broken support material in the tank without needing to drain the vat. This is a great one to print in resin as well because resin is a lot softer and this way the scoop won't leave any scratch marks on your FEP sheet. Alright, so if you guys have other suggestions or questions, please comment them down below. And it's funny because I never expected this channel to become a 3D printing channel, but you know, the Ender 3 Pro video just got to 1 million views, which is insane. So I might post a quick update video on that. And then, you know, obviously I have to do the part two next. Then I also just got this in the mail. So huge thanks to Tina and Jason from Creality again for sending me these printers. And thank you all so much for making 2020, this nightmare of a year, a bit more bearable for me and for, uh, you know, watching my videos. Uh, anyways, happy new year.